Sue Barker. Hi. Hello. Long time no see. Long time no see. Now, um, you gave a message through Simon Mundy to say if I could get down to Wimbledon, <laughs> you could have a chat. Absolutely. I came to Wimbledon for you. <laughs> We're here. Well, glad, glad you could come here. Have you enjoyed it so far? Except the we-, we haven't turned on the weather for you yet. Well, we've been here 30 minutes and so far so good. Okay. But unfortunately, I've, I can't stay that long because obviously right. I have a day job. I know. I'd, I'd, I would love to sit around <laughs> for two weeks and just watch the tennis. That I, well, that's be, what I do, you that, see. They call it work, but all I do is sit here for two weeks just enjoying tennis and talking to great names from, from the sport. So it, it's, the it's, gr- lo- it's, it's such job. a good thing for you to, to have turned your hobby into your profession exactly. and then your profession into your other yeah. profession is kind of the dream I know. right i know i mean from, yeah, when i was uh, i suppose when i was 14 i had my eyes set on being a professional tennis player at 17 i went to go and live in america and then uh, came back when i was 28 wondered what the heck i was going to do once injury sort of ended my career and i sort of fell into tv mm. working for an australian network then came over came over here and, and then joined the bbc and this is my 21st year covering wimbledon that's incredible wow. it is well my listeners will be very pleased that we've got an interview with you because no. they've been they've been I'm sure gagging they're... to hear from you from, <laughs> from, from subar <laughs> that's our nickname for you oh, do you okay, like subar so i do like subar you've called it before uh, no i haven't okay <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go with it <laughs> but, for now but, okay absolutely i'll live <laughs> With it. Now the thing is, because we've got a load of young listeners on my show, a lot of them might not realise that you were a, a fine, fine player. Yeah, world number British, three. But you British know, number one. Yeah, British number one, world number three. But I've got to say that now seeing the players of today, and I've just been working with that, you know, um, doing a documentary with Andy Murray, and seeing how they play and how they train and how they work, I realised that what I was doing was a bit of a hobby. <laughs> but it was, you know, it has changed so much, and they are just superhuman athletes now. But you know what? I just love my career, and I, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Do you think Andy Murray would be as good with a wooden racket, though? Well, that's true. Absolutely. No, we had we and we had training shoes that didn't none of these air things that they have these days so you know we we had the very basic sort of equipment but you know what I had the best time and all the all the um, girls that I was on tour with they're now all back here like Martina Navratilova and Chris Evert Pam Shriver and we all meet up like you know wonderful we have a little party every time Wimbledon turns around yeah we do this is the greatest couple of weeks ever isn't it oh it's fantastic I wouldn't just wouldn't want to be anywhere else it's the greatest tournament in the world and you know even people like John McEnroe say that you know Americans they they just love it because of the history of it and everything that goes with it and the grass courts it's got so much going for it even the Americans not the Aussies though no 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 no, no. the Australians are better (laughs) but where are the Australians you see there's no one left exactly (laughs) you mentioned that documentary with Andy Murray yeah fascinating wasn't it oh really fascinating I didn't really know him too well, but uh, over the last few months I've been travelling with him and what he's been through in his life is just incredible and, and, and the, the things he's had to deal with and, and all of that in the limelight because he's not, uh, he's not a... Uh, cel- he doesn't like the celebrity. He's a very private person mm. and it doesn't come easy to him to be in the spotlight. But you know what? He's in a, he's in a sport where he's got to be in the spotlight and he, and he deals with it as best he can, but you can tell he's not comfortable, but he is just top guy he is just really really nice to be around it was amazing how many people they have in that team oh I know they have a team of people they have a nutritionist and they have a uh, a physician yeah then they have a well two yeah two physios two trainers and he has a a guy that does all the website for him because he's got to keep all his fans up to date with different things they have a guy that runs the ice bath for him oh I know yeah yes I I could have done with that (laughs) the ice man the ice man wouldn't have been on my team (laughs) I can tell you (laughs) Would you would you would you go in for all that sort of stuff if you were playing now? You'd have to well, go. I think you have to. I mean, you look at all of the, all of the top players now have these massive teams around them, and uh, you know, and uh, it has to. You know, that's the way it is. I mean, when I was playing, I couldn't even afford to take my coach with me, so I just travelled on my own. So I was travelling around the world on my own, doing my own flights, booking my own hotels, booking my own practice courts and everything. So it's a whole different world now. But they get paid a lot more, so they can afford <laughs> to have a team. You see, that's true. One point five million for the winner here. Is that what it is? Yeah. That's uh, also. I was looking at the the prize money for the people who kind yeah. of go out in the twenty four grand for round, first round loser. First round, sec- 20, first round losers twenty four grand. Yeah. It's a good couple of weeks' work, that, <laughs> yes, isn't it? If, yes, if, if, you're you're <laughs> if you're not very good. If you're not very good. They're pretty good. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you're them. not very good, just turn up and go, I'm in the draw. <laughs> yes, if you're exactly. the wild card, for example. Oh, I know. Absolutely. It would be great, wouldn't it? And then you get per diems as well for each day. So then you enter the doubles and the mixed and you just keep earning money. It's great. Which leads me very nice onto my next question. Right. One day, I think we should do a mixed doubles match. Oh, yeah? Would, do you still play a bit? I, I, not, not a lot. Okay. <laughs> I play a bit. <laughs> yeah. W- Who would, would we challenge? McEnroe. Oh, hold on a minute. Yeah. And someone else. Who could we have? Um, like a legend. 
A legend of tech. Oh, this is getting a bit tricky here. What? A, what? what a, oh no, Martina. You see, you couldn't have a Martina. Navratilova. I, yeah. Yes, I don't fancy our chances. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. You don't know about my first serve. My first serve comes from. It comes from like eight foot. I don't want to tell you about my first serve. <laughs> oh no. What, I, think, I could beat it running to the net. I think. <laughs> we'd have to put a date in now. But okay. Potentially, would you be interested one day? Absolutely. If the if the, if the diaries aligned, yeah. we could all get it sorted. But I think we've got to sort out different opponents. I'm not happy with that. Okay. I think, <laughs> I think it would be a great mixed doubles team. I think it'd be fun. But Do you know those... what my favourite word would be? Yours. Okay. I'd get you That's running fine. all over the place. I will just stand at the net, and if one comes towards me, then I'll hit it. But That'd everything else is down to you. Is you that can, all right? You, stand... you do all this running now. You do that, marathons and all sorts. Well, so you can stand at the net looking beautiful. And you, can, you can just stand there. <laughs> well, I'll stand at the net. Looking, yeah. looking elegant. We'll get you someone to hold an umbrella over your head. Oh, that would be lovely. Absolutely. Well, that's what we can get you to do. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, let's, let's do some serious tennis. Right. So... You've got to say Andy Murray because you've got to be the British behind the British people. Do you think that Andy Murray's going to do it this year? I actually tipped Andy Murray two weeks before Wimbledon started. Okay. I felt that he. Was I, I going tipped to him do... three weeks before. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I did, and I, I still believe he can win it. I, I do think that it's going to be Djokovic and Murray in the final. I cannot see anyone else getting there. I mean, Burdick is very, very dangerous, but I think they're going to be there. And I just feel it's Murray's year. He. Last year, he, you know, I, I made him cry on centre court. You know, he, he was in tears three well, weeks you, later. You, let's clear that up. You didn't punch him or anything. <laughs> no, you did, just for the listeners just, who didn't see it. Yeah, I just asked him about the match, and that was mm. it. He was so emotional. He just cried and cried and cried. And it, I didn't realise how much it hurt him that Wimbledon loss last year. Three weeks later, he came and beat Federer to win the Olympic gold. That meant so much to him. Then yeah. he went off and won a Grand Slam. He is a different player, belief-wise now, and I, I think he'll beat Djokovic. Djokovic, on paper, is still the favourite, but I just believe it's Murray's year. I think with everything aligned as well, with yeah. all the big names going out, mm. it, it also with Serena going out, I know yeah. it's completely irrelevant to Andy, but I'd probably it's, actually it's not, because you've got well, all it, these big it names. It affected he, him yesterday, because he was on yeah. court after Serena, and he said... Wow, he said, I was expecting Serena to win in like 55 minutes. He yeah. was ready to play. And then he, he saw Serena go out and he just says, there's no easy matches in this game. And he yeah. had a very tense second set yesterday. So, uh, you know, it's, he's still got to win the matches and they're, they're not easy matches. But I just can't see anyone beating him before the final. And I just feel he's going to do it. Well, Sue, so thanks for your time. I know you're so busy because you're yeah. on Mrs. Wimbledon. But it's been nice to see you again. <laughs> I'm only on air for seven and a half hours today. It's all <laughs> no! Right. Well, I'll be on the radio the same time you're on the telly. So, Excellent. Um, we're, we'll, we'll make sure that we're... Okay. I'll be, I'll make sure I'm watching with one eye okay. on, on the telly. All but right. thank you so much. Nice to see you. No problem. I'll practice my tennis for that doubles. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Lovely to see you, Greg. Thanks.